I'm Lane Strother. I'm an attorney here in Mountain Home. I practice law with my wife, Judy. We've been in the Strother firm for almost 30 years. We have practicing it with us, Bill Anderson, who is also a lawyer. Okay, let me talk with you a little bit about guardianships because again, in estate planning, if people don't do the planning ahead of time, uh, many times what they end up with is they reach a time in their life when they become incompetent. And oftentimes where they find themselves is in a hospital. The hospital's wanting to do something with them because they've spent their stay there. And they need somebody who has the authority to say, let's take this person here or there or someplace else. And so I often get called to say, we need a guardianship for mom. She's in the hospital and she's not competent to tell the doctors where she wants to go. So we petition the court, we have a hearing, there, there's a temporary guardianship and a permanent guardianship. And sometimes you start out as a temporary guardianship and it becomes a permanent guardianship, especially in these situations where you have moms in the hospital and we need to do something immediately. But we file the petition with the clerk of the court the petition is then heard by the judge. The judge enters an ex parte, which means without a party, an ex parte order naming a person as someone's guardian. Then after the ex parte order is entered, it is served on the incompetent. This is when I first started practicing, I thought, well, why do you serve an incompetent person with papers? And, and these papers include the petition, they include a notice of the incompetence rights, and a notice of when the next hearing is going to be. And you have to have that hearing within three days on a temporary guardianship. But the purpose of that is if you're trying to get somebody declared incompetent that's not incompetent, well then they have the opportunity to come forward and discuss that with the court. But then you have the hearing in three days and then you have, if you want it to be a permanent guardianship, within 90 days of the uh, initial petition, you have to have a permanent guardianship hearing. And the value of the guardianship is it's somebody to take care of mom's person or a person and an estate. Uh, sometimes, again, there's conflict among the kids as to what's going to happen with mom's estate or dad's estate and so oftentimes it's best to have a bank as guardian of the estate and a person as guardian of the person. Let me talk with you a little bit about the second area where guardianships are often needed and that is with children. And again, when I talked earlier about how that in a will for a young couple, if they don't set out who's going to be guardian of their minor children, then the court has to make the decision. Uh, and and the, the benefit of doing that in your will is it gives the court your directions on it. Uh, but a, a minor is determined to be an incompetent person because of their age minority. Uh, and, and so oftentimes we do a guardianship for minors to take care of their estate, especially if mom or dad had insurance or there was a car wreck and there was some proceeds to be paid to these minors, then someone is there to take care of their estate as well as their person. Okay. Likewise, adults, uh, again for health reasons or other reasons uh, become incompetent and, and again one of the reasons I encourage people to have trust is before you can have a guardianship set up the person has to be declared incompetent and that's just not something that any of us want to do to our parents or have done to us and so if you have a living trust you can avoid the process of the guardianship because you've already named somebody who will take care of your estate 
And if you have an advanced directive, then you will have taken, named somebody to take care of your person if you can't make your wishes known. There are, and, and this too is something that's very important to keep in mind with reference to a guardianship is that you are required to report annually to the court what you do with the guardian's estate. And that usually is a, the guardianship itself is a fairly expensive process to get started uh, because you've got the filing fees and other fees. And then you've got the attorney's fees, you've got the annual accounting that you have to do if you're managing someone's money. You have to get approval from the court before you can sell something like a house or something like that, you have to get the approval from the court. So you just end up with, with a lot of fees being involved in those. But sometimes you have no choice.